uh, two pounds of shortened pencil that's on the horse trainer. Uh, we're going to talk now about handheld weight only versus muscle mode weight. My answer to that is it's not a versus, it's not a competition, it's both. Uh, if you carry a weapon mount light, you should carry a handheld light. Uh, I'm of the opinion now that all serious fighting guns should have the capability of accepting a white light unit. Uh, if it's a fighting long gun that is not meant to be used at uh, beyond beyond 300 meters, it should have a white light. So, and the reason for that is trying to manipulate a long gun of some form and a handheld is not very easy. You know, trying to manipulate one with a weapon mount light, you can get light on where you're going, and uh, everybody knows that. That's accepted to any weapon. Okay, but with a pistol. We got all kinds of techniques here. Techniques here, 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 all this good stuff. And people say, well, you don't need a weapon of light. You're right, I don't need one. But it damn sure makes things easier. Now, let's talk about that. You don't need one. I understand that I don't need one, but folks, it's 2013, not 1913, okay? Uh, the pistol I carry holds three times the capacity of the most common self-defense pistols then. You know, revolvers, oh, oh, I'm sorry, some people have 1911, so it holds twice plus two the capacity of one of those. You know, there's no comparison to that. Uh, this pistol loaded weighs as much as some of those empty. So, you know, there's been, just because it wasn't, it's not needed, it wasn't done that way previously, doesn't mean it shouldn't be considered, okay? Now, I'm not knocking the old timers. My grandpa was a paratrooper in the 50s. He taught, what I know about firearms and weapons in general, that being sticks, knives, guns, uh, running people over with trucks, you know, hitting people with an axe, all, all that stuff, you know, he pretty much told me about when I was coming up. So, you know, that's... You know, I, I have nothing against the old ways, but I also know that you have to change with the times, okay? Uh, so, I started looking for a weapon mount light because on my first Glock 22, I had an Insight M3 on it. Actually, I think Streamlight made it for Insight, and it was actually dual branded, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, anyway, a friend of mine who works for a local police department, they issue the M3 now. It's got some form of LED in it. He's not overly fond of it. Uh, he used the original X300, obviously. Uh, for those of y'all who saw my last video, this is an X300 Ultra. Okay, 500 lumens of, of serious grip ass. That bitch is bright as hell, too. We'll leave it at that. Uh, but that's a technical. We'll see my video on the lights I just got. Uh, there are other good pistol mount lights you should consider. But, you know, they're all going to be in the $100 to $200 range. And I think the Surefire is going to be the best bank for your buck. That's just my opinion. Uh, but why should you consider a weapon mount light? Well, for one, well, correction, let me go back one. What, what is the drawback to the weapon mount light? Well, if you're only going to carry one light, you should not carry it mounted on your weapon. And the reason for that is I am notorious for losing my keys, okay? And yes, when I thought about that, I actually was just looking for my keys, and then I got to make sure they were where I thought they were. So let's say I lose my keys, and I'm at, oh, Walmart. Damn, where are my keys at? I come out with my gun and I start looking through my car. I'm like, where are my keys in there? That's not going to go over very well. Or how about this? I hear something. Say someone, say someone says, I may come by later tonight. Okay? I may come by your house later tonight. And I, and I hear something and I'm looking around like this. What's wrong with this picture? I'm pointing the loaded weapon, well this one's not loaded right now, but I, otherwise, I'm pointing the otherwise loaded weapon at everything I point my light at, which is not always necessary. So now you might come in to where things like this. My weapon's not pointing to anything but the floor. You know, I'm actually more partial to just using this when I'm searching. Now I can do what I need to do. I could drop this light if I want to, just drop it to the ground, put it in my pocket, whatever, while I'm engaging here. 
all right? Uh, but you should still carry this just because you don't need to point a, a loaded gun at every at everything. Uh, what are some other advantages of the handheld light? Well, if you learn how to use, use a handheld light, well, doesn't matter what gun you carry, you can still illuminate your target. Revolvers don't accept, well, some of the new ones do, but most revolvers won't accept the light. Uh, a lot of 1911s won't accept the light. You know, earlier SIGs, Beretta 92s, not the new A1. You know, a lot of these older guns won't accept the light. And that's not to say they're bad guns, but if you want to run a weapon out of light, you're stuck with adapters or getting it milled out, and it's just, you might not want to do that. Uh, now, with that being said, uh, the Beretta M9, if I had to go back to carrying a factory M9, you know, I, I would learn how to you know, practice a little bit more on using a handheld light. Uh, if someone just give me an M9, now obviously not a military M9, a Beretta 92 FS, uh, I would put one of the Surefire adapters on it if it was my personal gun. Uh, or I'd run it up somewhere and trade it in on a 92A1. Uh, or another Vought. <laughs> yeah, another Vought. That's me. I'd trade it in on another Vought. But, you know, some people just, they don't want a gun with a rail on it. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with using a handheld light. However, the bulk of modern service and carry pistols these days that are of service size, I shouldn't necessarily say carry, shouldn't necessarily say carry pistols, but service pistols have a rail. Uh, use it. I like the light now for a few reasons. Number one, weapon manipulation. Can I get to a magazine? I got my light here. Alright, I need to reload. Now I'm stuck how to do funky grips, you know, and hope I remember to get my light back on on things. Well, with a left amount of light, all I have to do is let off pressure on the switch. What if I need a free hand? What if this is someone that I like? Okay. I need, obviously, something shooting over here. I, I need to move them. Well, I, I need to see what I'm shooting at, too. And now, so now I'm, I'm stuck having to do this and hope they go where I want them to go so I can see what I'm doing while, while doing it. Or... I can get a hand on them and go about doing what I have to do with just a simple transfer and activating my weapon on it. All right, now let's look at a few other things that are less than common sense. Oh, one more that is common sense. The light is directly below my muzzle. We all know that. Here's one that a lot of people won't think of. I'm shooting in attention. I cut my light on on the draw. Maybe wearing this, okay? I know exactly where my gun's pointed, and I don't have to have a laser, all right? Because uh, I don't need to be precise here. I just need to know that it's pointed at him and not somebody else, all right? This is another good thing, all right? The next one, this is this might piss some people off, but that's nothing I'm not used to. And uh, I'll be honest with you, if it pisses you off, I uh, don't give a damn. I really don't. Okay, so if it pisses you off, grow up. Some competition venues do not allow a weapon out of light. Matter of fact, I don't know one that, anyone that does. Uh, their reasoning is it's unfair to people who are using guns that can't mount a light. You can shoot at night. Or, what else does it do? What is this? This is what you call mass. All right. How do I slow down muzzle rise? I can either vent gases up, improve my grip, or make it fight harder to lift by adding mass. Okay? Now, I, I fully support working on uh, strengthening the fundamentals of your marksmanship there and getting your grip tightened up to where it should be. But this is 
This requires nothing more than just adjusting your draw to the new balance. Okay? Now that slide has to lift this along the way while it's recoiling. Okay? So, just uh, something to keep in mind that there are competition venues that say that this gives you an unfair advantage. Well, y'all know how I feel about unfair advantages. The only time it's unfair is when it's not in your hands. So, I would strongly suggest to everybody who sees this video, at least give a weapon metal light a try. And I already know, someone's going to say, you can't conceal a weapon metal light. I beg to differ, because I've been doing it every day for about, eh, about two weeks now. Uh, is it harder than concealing a, a pistol without a light? Sure, it's bigger. Is it less comfortable? Not really, actually. The added mass kind of keeps the holster where I carry a little bit more stable for me. If you're going to carry it on, on the belt, outside the waistband, it's going to be a little bit even more hard, even more difficult to conceal. If you're going to carry it behind the hip, well, I haven't carried a weapon on a light behind the hip before, so I can't say anything about that because I don't know. Um, you know, that's, if you're carrying it inside the waistband behind the hip, that is, I can't say a word about it. I've carried it on the hip, but I wasn't worried about concealing it then. Uh, one of my best friends carries a Springfield operator with a, with a light on it, uh, directly on, on his hip bone in a side armor? I think it's side armor. Anyway, a custom Kydex holster. I didn't make it. Cause my outside the waistband holsters look like shit. Uh, so I don't make them for people. Uh, I make inside the waistband, that's about it. Uh, anyway, uh, I strongly suggest you give a weapon metal light a try. Uh, a few good ones. Uh, like I said, I've heard mixed things about the Insight M series. Uh, some like them, some don't. Take that for what you will. Uh, the M Force APL Alpha Papa Lima. Uh, I've heard a lot of really good things about that light. Uh, the Surefire X300, the original X300, is a very good light. You can still find it on the secondary market. Uh, and there, there's probably still a few vendors that have some, like in reserve, I guess, that's still in stock. Not necessarily in stock, but in stores. They may be doing a clearance on. Uh, obviously, I love the X300 Ultra. Uh, the Streamlight TLR1 series are fine lights. I have one of those metal on the, sh the shot the shotgun, which is getting some work done for it, but still, it's a fine, fine light. And uh, there's about all I can think of off the top of my head. The uh, TLR2, TLR3, TLR4, off of Streamlight. Uh, I've heard good things about those lights. Uh, the X2 uh, from Insight, I've heard pretty good things about that light. Uh, you know, those lights I haven't worked with firsthand, but nevertheless, uh, I've heard good things about them, so I'm inclined to believe those. I would highly suggest you give a weapon metal light a try. Remember, it doesn't replace your handheld. It does not replace your handheld. It augments your handheld, and it augments your gun handling ability. It increases it just dramatically. So, um, I, would, I would strongly suggest if your pistol has a, has a rail, start looking at a weapon metal light, and... Uh, We'll go from there. The sky's the limit at that point. Remember, anything that someone else tells you is an unfair advantage is only an unfair advantage when it's not in their hands. Because if they had the option of using that unfair advantage and not getting caught in a game, they would do it in a heartbeat. And if they, if they don't, they're far more ethical than I am. I'm personally, I'm of the opinion that I'm there, if I'm, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it to win. If I'm fighting for my life, I'm definitely going to win. There's, I, I didn't say... I'm trying to win. I said I'm going to win, regardless of what I have to do. Uh, so if I know that putting that extra bit of mass will make me be able to shoot faster because I have less muzzle flip to fight, then I'm going to do it. If I know that I can get that light on target and not have to worry about having a hand tied up, then I'm going to do it. Uh, there are a few negatives with a weapon metal light, but in my opinion, for what it's worth, and I mean, yeah, I, I, I have to buy videos on YouTube monetized, but I don't make no money out of them yet. <laughs> so, and I don't collect people. I don't collect money from you for you to watch this video. So, my opinion is worth exactly what you personally paid me for it, which is nothing, unless someone put a check in the mail. In which case, I appreciate it, and I'll tell you your opinion is worth whatever you know you paid me for mine. But still, uh, anyway, you know my opinion is not worth very much. But my opinion is that if you have the capability of using a rail, you should sincerely try it. And uh, I don't think you'll be uh, be wrong by trying. By try it, I don't mean run it for a day or two. I mean run it for a month or two, every day. And 
uh, give it give it an honest, fair try. So, uh, also, I don't believe that the negatives of carrying a weapon on a light. I don't believe those outweigh the advantages at all. I think the positives and the advantages far supersede the few negatives of it. So, look at what's my light. It's uh, nothing wrong with trying it. All right, stay frosty, stay in the fight, and uh, always seek the unfair advantage.